Selamat datang di edisi Chief Corner. Kali ini kita memiliki edisi yang berbeda dengan edisi sebelumnya. Kita berada di edisi khusus G20 dan bersama dengan kita sudah hadir narasumber yang luar biasa. Dan edisi Chief Corner G20 akan ditemani oleh saya, Christine Novita Dewi, bersama dengan... Uh, saya Faiza Hasan sebagai co-host acara ini dan sudah hadir bersama kita semua hari ini Ibu Susane Friedrich. Ibu Susane adalah Direktur dari Alliance for Integrity. Alliance for Integrity adalah suatu prakarsa multi pemangku kepentingan yang digerakkan oleh dunia usaha di mana tujuannya adalah untuk mempromosikan uh, bisnis integritas dan transparansi dalam sistem ekonomi. Welcome to the Chief Corner Susane. Glad to have you here. Susani. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Okay, Our we are preparing some uh, questions here, and then the very first uh, questions that you maybe will share with us is why Alliance for Integrity? Yeah, well, uh, back in, in 2015 um, in Germany at the uh, German chapter of the Global Compact, um, there was uh, an observation that uh, a lot of companies that reported on the different principles of the UN Global Compact did not so much provide information regarding the 10th principle of the Global Compact, which is about fighting corruption in all its forms. And then uh, the organizers came up with the idea of creating an alliance to promote uh, integrity in the economic system. And why an alliance? Because a Uh, corruption is a very complex problem and one actor alone cannot fix it. So it is important to join forces to bring together different actors on a table, private sector, public sector, civil society, academia, to make sure that all the perspectives are seen and all the different interests are met Uh, and and uh, join, uh, join energy, create synergies to work in the fight against corruption. But corruption can be seen uh, as a problem that has to be solved by sanctioning. But we all know that sanctioning does not work all the time. We have a lot of laws around the world, but there's still corruption in the world. So we decided to um, uh, uh, adopt another approach and the approach is preventing corruption. And to prevent corruption, we need a culture of integrity in, on the personal level, on the organizational level, and also on the system level. And that's why we called the, uh, the initiative Alliance for Integrity. Okay. Next. Such a, it's a very interesting background mm -hmm. to, yeah, to learn. And this mm -hmm. is also interesting because I also like kind of work uh, with you. We, we work together. Um, for quite a long time now. Um, so I have a very uh, interesting question for you as well. So in Alliance, we work um, a lot with SMEs. I mm. mean, Alliance for Integrity mm. is driven by the business, um, but we also work a lot with SMEs. Why choose SMEs? Mm -hmm. Why it's important in this uh, economy system? Well, first of all, because uh, MS, uh, SMEs in the world account for 90% of business activities and they provide about uh, 50% of all jobs worldwide. So they are a very important actor when it comes to, say, sustainable development. And on, on the other hand, SMEs are most vulnerable to corruption. They lack resources, they lack, uh, lack the knowledge, and it's important to provide them the capacities to be able to prevent corruption. And when we created the Alliance for Integrity, uh, there was another um, idea behind, because uh, companies, large companies, have to face more and more international legislation uh, and have to fulfill requirements regarding anti-corruption and compliance. And for them, they have the capacity to do it on the company level. Yeah? But when it comes to uh, um, 
meeting the requirements of uh, compliance and integrity along the global supply chains, it becomes a challenge because we have a lot of SMEs, mostly in developing countries and emerging economies, and these uh, companies lack the capacities. So the idea was to create this platform where the, the companies, public sector and civil society could come together and join efforts to build capacity among these SMEs. And how uh, integrity become a determining factor, success factor in this case of SMEs? Well, we have uh, the, the topic of compliance. The first um, uh, objective that we have is to uh, help SMEs to build compliance management systems so that they are able to meet the legal requirements yeah, and they, their own rules. But only looking at rules and trying to observe them is not enough mm -hmm. because um, people in a company often are in difficult situations. They have to face gray areas, dilemma, and then it's not enough to know a rule because there is not a rule for every situation. And to really prevent corruption, it is important to have values in a company and to have ethical guidelines. And that is creating a culture of uh, integrity, making people know what they are doing, what for they are doing it, and what values they can apply in difficult situations. So integrity, uh, well, let's say, Compliance is uh, the backbone of a company, uh, but uh, the integrity is the heart of company. Yeah, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so uh, just like uh, you, the same thing. The uh, integrity is a fashion of the business, as a fashion of the business. When you 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 say that uh, you build uh, fa uh, the culture of integrity in the SM is? It's not a fashion, it's really uh, uh, underlying, uh, it, it's important to, to be able to have um, a long-term business uh, success. Without integrity, you have not the, um, uh, the orientation you have to take to, to build your business, to, um, to have the guidelines to, to make your uh, staff acting in the right way, do the right thing. And integrity is an overarching um, uh, issue that has to be integrated in the strategic part of the company, but also in the processes, in the management, and in the monitoring. So it's really a transversal topic, and it's not only um, a responsibility of the uh, owner of the company, but the owner has, of, of course, a very important task because what we call the tone from the top is important. What the, the head of the co company tells to his employees is, is very important. But the employees have to understand why it is important to act with integrity. And that is why we have uh, came up, for example, with an, a publication uh, that we use in all the countries where we work, and it's called No Excuses. Uh, and it's about the 10 most used excuses that employees uh, use when they want to um, um, defend their corrupt acts. Yeah? Because often employees uh, have no orientation from the, from the directory, and they try to do the best for the company, but they don't know that they are acting maybe in a corrupt manner. And so it's important to let them know why corruption acts are so bad. They may say, for example, well, I didn't do it for my own benefit. It was just to help the company. Or another typical argument is, well, I did not, um, if I don't do it, others will do so or everybody does it, why shouldn't we, yeah? Um, so there are all, uh, these different arguments, we pick up the 10 most important, and that varies a little bit from the company, because it's very important when you want to build a culture of integrity, um, that you really have to take into account the context of the country or region or sector, and make it fit 
to your uh, specific situation. And that is why we have this basic uh, publication or excuses. But when you bring it to the, uh, to the countries, we engage different actors, we sit in a table and we discuss what are the main challenges uh, regarding corruption in the country, what are the main arguments that people use when they want to defend the corrupt acts. And then we adapt this publication. It's very helpful to, to come up with the tone from the top and to explain the employees why it is so important to act with integrity. So why you put uh, in your web page in your web page you put uh, some quotes from your partners yeah yeah uh, that's uh, such, such as uh, I have uh, one quote from your partners from Mexico mm -hmm. uh, the Alliance for Integrity has a, a good practice and a collection of article of COVID-19 and its implication of compli uh, compliance. So like this, uh, adopting a culture of business integrity strengthens the lines of defense in times of crisis and will build uh, the foundation for a shared future well-being. The kind you make a publication to spread out the, uh, what is it, uh, make a culture of integrity. integrity. So, so it works? Exactly, that's, a, that's a, the spirit of the Alliance for Integrity. Because you can have a short-term success mm. when you don't act with integrity. Mm. But in the long run, you will depend on difficult relations. You will be uh, not mm. able to grow, uh, not only for the resources that you have to, to dedicate to bribes and, and other illicit acts. Uh, but also because you cannot rely on your business partners, for example. So in talking about crisis, we have seen how the uh, disruption of the supply chains now in the COVID-19 pand pandemic, and those companies who were compliant and acted with integrity had clear advantages because they knew very well their business partners and their suppliers and uh, could act accordingly and were not um, so much exposed to, to the rup uh, to rupture of the, of the supply chain and to losing uh, uh, business partners. So this is in times of crisis even more important than in normal times, but today we have no normal times. It's, it's one cri many crises together. Uh, that are combined, so it's uh, important for companies to really make the business case for integrity and uh, integrate it very well in their business strategy because that is the only opportunity to have a growth in the long run and to be able to resist uh, the different crises that companies are facing these days. Um, and um, next question maybe, mm. so Lines for Integrity is active globally like in more than 13 countries. Mm. And the initiative works a lot with women, especially mm. women on SMEs. Can you tell us a little bit more why mm. addressing uh, these issues to women entrepreneurs? Sure. Well, this is a topic that we are dealing with uh, um, for not so long time. We, have, uh, we started about uh, two or three years ago, ago to explore the connection between uh, corruption and gender. Yeah? And uh, this discussion was just uh, uh, initiating on the global level. And there are two aspects uh, uh, about the connection between gender and, and corruption. One is that women normally are more affected, more exposed to corruption, because uh, women often are part of a vulnerable group in the population, and they depend more on public services, like um, health, uh, education. And, and so when the public services don't work well, they are more affected. On the other hand, the other side uh, of the medal is that women can be um, um, important uh, actors of change, agents of change. Yeah? They, if, if we empower women in companies, then they can be very important uh, when it comes to fighting corruption. But of course, we have to make sure that we meet, uh, meet their needs. Because, for example, when we uh, look at the um, communication inside a company and we want to set up a whistleblower channel, 
we have to look what are the different needs of men of women related to men for example yeah uh, so there are different dimensions on how we can look at the um, um, at this connection between the two concepts and one of course when talking about women being affected by corruption um, there is another dimension which is um, that women are sometimes asked to do sexual favors, what we call sextortion, uh, which is the most cruel, uh, violent form of, of um, um, uh, corruption. So um, we offer formats so that women can be protected and know how to defend themselves uh, on an individual level due to their knowledge, but also on a collective level, we come, to, come together and fight corruption as women entrepreneurs. Very interesting. Okay. Marvita, you want to ask? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you think how optimal the, the achievement of Afin's program so far? So what would, uh, have we achieved so far? Yeah. yeah? Well, what we have, uh, maybe I, I explain a little bit more how we are uh, working in practice. Yeah? Uh, we have three pillars for our work. One is um, awareness raising yeah? about the problem uh, of, of um, corruption. What is corruption? How can I uh, recognize corruption? What can I do to prevent corruption? And how can I act together with others to prevent corruption? Yeah? And we provide, uh, like the uh, publication that I mentioned, uh, the handbook No Excuses or other publications dealing with different aspects of corruption and prevention of corruption. And we share it and we discuss it. So we have a peer learning platform where actors, not only SMEs, but also other actors can learn from each other across countries and across regions, because we are a global um, uh, initiative. As Pfizer said, we are working in 14 countries uh, now. And so what we can do is show what works well or not so good in a country, shared with others so that the actors can learn from each other. The second pillar is uh, a training offer for SMEs. And in Indonesia, we call it Duku training. Uh, it's from companies to companies. And what we do is we invite the big companies and the chief compliance officers of the big companies to be trained as trainers by us. We have a, speci a, a specific methodology which is very practice oriented and which helps to create a trusted space to share experiences, bad experiences and some good experiences regarding uh, the prevention of corruption. So we teach this methodologies to the chief compliance officers as big companies. Then we engage with business associations, um, commercial chambers, and so on, to reach out to SMEs, and we invite them to uh, uh, come to our trainings. Yeah, and then the chief compliance officers do the trainings. They are the experts. Yeah, they have. Uh, um, very um, uh, profound knowledge regarding uh, anti-corruption and they can teach it very well to the, to the SMEs. And on the other hand, they themselves learn a lot from the SMEs because with this practical exercises and, and experience sharing, they see what are the problems that SMEs have to, uh, have to face every, in the everyday business. And that's very interesting for them. So it's a win-win situation. The chief compliance officers learn and of course the representatives of the, of the SMEs learn. And we have different formats uh, starting from a one-day training. We have also a format which is called Business uh, Integrity Journey, which is a long-term program over six months where we have different formats where we train the SME representatives and there's a mentoring program, we have exchange and after six months we can see how they have been able to really make a change on the company level, um, organize um, um, a management uh, compliance program, at least have the values established, a code of conduct at the company level, establish the tone from the top, this is uh, another format, so it's a longer one, and it allows us also to share how integrity and the compliance management really can make um, 
uh, a contribution to the business uh, strategy because then we can see how, how it is connected because companies working with integrity are, have better access to capital, and they have better access to uh, global supply chains when they are looking for clients, they have better access to qualified staff because people want to work not want to work in a corrupt company, but in a, in, a, in a company with integrity. So there are a lot of advantages. And over the time, we, we try to show the benefits uh, for the companies. So that is the second pillar of our program. And the third one is about public-private dialogue. Because, of course, companies uh, act in a business environment. And it's important that this business environment is favorable to integrity and is not uh, putting obstacles through legislation or other disincentives to, to integrity. So it's important to engage with the government and to see how is the legal framework, what other incentives uh, public organizations can provide, for example, for public procurement or uh, subsidies or providing... Um, um, systems where uh, companies can share their data uh, to make uh, a business environment more uh, transparent. So these are um, tools that public sector, the public sector can use to incentivize uh, integrity. And that's why we engage in this dialogue, yeah? to, to uh, have a level playing field in the end, fair business for the, for the companies and, and, the, and finally for the whole population. Um, and what we do also, we, we uh, participate a lot in international um, uh, processes to bring our good practices from the ground to uh, the discussion about international standards. And the other way around, we take the international standards and share, it, uh, share them with our companies in our trading formats. We have designed one tool, which is called the Integrity App. It's a self-assessment tool for SMEs, so they can download the application and they can, uh, there's a catalog of 20 uh, uh, questions and they answer these questions to learn to what extent they comply already with international uh, integrity standards. Yeah, and then there is a, um, they get uh, points and they can figure out where they still have um, gaps. Uh, and we check the, uh, anonymously the, uh, the information so we can get an overview of the situation in a specific sector or specific uh, region. And in some cases, we collaborate with governments on that. And the governments then uh, can uh, orient their offers for the SMEs towards these gaps and really meet their needs. Yeah? So while well, these are the three pillars uh, we, we are working uh, uh, at and you ask me what is the impact we are creating. <laughs> so what we have done so far, we have created a large pool of trainers, the chief compliance officers, and any time we want to offer trainings for SMEs, we just have to call them and they can do the trainings in the region where they work. And this is a, on a, done on a pro bono basis. So we have a lot of capacity in place to uh, build capacity for SMEs on a very low price and for the benefit of all. Yeah? So this is, uh, 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 and these trainers also meet uh, and come together to continuously um, update the trainings, um, come up with new training uh, contents, for example, for specific target groups or specific sectors. Uh, for example, we work in Indonesia, we work a lot in the forestry sector, and we have uh, developed with our trainers uh, um, a specific Duku training for companies in the forest sector. Yeah? In other parts of the world, we work in the construction sector. That might be interesting also when we further engage, because that is what we would like to do in the infrastructure sector in Indonesia, which is a very important sector here. Um, then we have different target groups. We talked already about the women-led companies, uh, but we are also working with startups. Um, so there are a lot of different models and forms, and that is something what we can offer very quickly. 
Then we have a lot of um, knowledge on our website. We have a lot of knowledge spread through the social media. We have about 12,000 followers that regularly pick up our information and use it for their um, for their needs. We have a lot of success stories from companies to share with other SMEs because it's easier to learn from a peer and you feel more motivated when you, when you hear from a peer that uh, integrity works. Is there any challenge uh, that Afins face when engaged with the public sectors? With the public sector? You, you, you the, the third pillar is yeah. the public sector a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Is there any challenge that often face, uh, especially in developing country? Yeah, it depends a lot. We are working with very uh, different actors uh, regarding the public sector in different countries. And uh, we engage with those that are really interested in, in bringing uh, the topic forward and working with integrity. Uh, for example, um, in some countries, we even provide services to the public sector, which is not our core business. Uh, but in Brazil, for example, uh, the government um, was so much interested in the integrity app for the companies that they said, well, we want to have the same for our public sector because they also have compliance officers on the public level. Yeah? And then we came up with a version of the integrity app just for the civil servants in Brazil. And uh, this is very helpful to the government because the same, they get an insight, a vision on how um, employees in the public sector deal with the topic of integrity. What do they know about integrity? Do they um, respect uh, the rules and, and how do they take the topic forward? So that is one of example of how uh, public sector is, is collaborating with us. And it depends, of course, on the country. The needs and the interests are, are different. When we talk about business sector and anti-corruption, we always know that there is interlinked topic, for example, like human rights and then labor rights and also environment. What kind of work that Alliance for Integrity undertake to address these issues? Yeah, this is uh, uh, definitely a very important uh, topic, uh, looking at upcoming legislation, uh, not only in, in, uh, in the European Union, but uh, globally. Uh, we have, on the one hand, we have a CSR reporting. Um, there will be a new, new directive at the EU level, which will be really a new paradigm, a paradigm for, uh, for companies. And at the same time, we have new um, supply chain due diligence legislation, uh, which uh, requires that companies uh, meet their uh, due diligence obligations regarding uh, human rights uh, and also environmental issues. And we know that there's a strong connection between corruption and the violation of human rights. So whereas uh, corruption is often the first step towards uh, the violation of human rights. So it's very important to, um, to work on the topic jointly and have a coherent vision of the risks that might appear and work them starting from a culture of integrity, working on the risk assessment and looking um, how companies can prevent not only corruption, but also the violation of human rights and, and uh, environmental damages. So we are just coming up with a, uh, uh, different formats now in the same logic. First, uh, providing information uh, to the companies to uh, make them uh, aware of the new requirements, and then also helping them to uh, come up with a, a risk analysis which is very specific depending on the company situation to really look where are your risks uh, in terms of child labor or labor uh, legislation in general, for example. And um, businesses are not used to looking at the damage they are causing to the communities. Mostly they look at the first tier of their supply chain because they are already required to do so by law. 
Um, but when it goes deeper in the supply chain, it's a big challenge for them to gather information of potential violations. Yeah? And with the upcoming CSR directive and also with the new supply chain due diligence, they will have to look more closer at the deeper supply chain and also at the communities that might be affected. And there we jump in on the first, uh, in the first place, discussing with the companies what has to change on the company level and that the compliance officers play a, a very important role because they are like the focal point in the company where um, different processes meet. And they have to make sure that uh, this culture of integrity is organized and coordinated in the, inside the company. And then um, uh, we discuss about uh, specific aspects of their uh, responsibility coming up with new uh, requirements regarding uh, whistleblower channel, grievance mechanism in, in for human rights. So we help them, we provide this platform to exchange experiences um, and uh, promote collaboration between them. Because, for example, in the case of smaller companies, it makes no sense to come up with their own grievance mechanism. It's much more um, um, useful to bring different companies together. First exchange really on the needs and how a good grievance mechanism could look like and then establish it jointly as a collective action. Okay, Susani, <laughs> could you uh, share uh, to us that uh, how a uh, company in Germany has uh, responded to ESG reporting? Company, the, the, the private sector has different segments. So there are companies uh, that are used to reporting and those that are, for example, uh, using uh, the uh, global reporting initiative um, um, indicators, they are very well prepared now for this uh, new uh, directive um, and others are not so well prepared. Yeah, so, and it will be a big effort for the companies to really set up the reporting me uh, mechanism. But once they have it in place, it will, in my opinion, be a very big advantage for them, for them and also for the consumers uh, and the, for the financial market. Yeah, because there will be uh, much more linkage between the sustainability strategy of the companies, much more transparency regarding their activities on a social level, on an environmental level, and it will be really a booster, I think, for sustainable development in the private sector. But it's still a challenge for a lot of companies. Um, they have to put in place the capacity inside the companies and they will have to go much further in the supply chains. As I said before, they will have to dive much deeper and uh, come up with new strategies and processes to be able uh, to meet uh, the needs of their uh, business partners in the second, third tier and so on. To give you an example, if we talk about environmental um, uh, CO2 emissions, for example, uh, most of the uh, uh, emissions occur uh, in the in the supply chain. Uh, Seventy to eighty percent occur in the supply chain, mm -hmm. and often uh, the problems occur in the deeper supply chain. So this is really something there we can also offer our formats because what we do is goes beyond the uh, yeah ancient core business I would say of the companies to provide their direct suppliers with uh, capacity for compliance. They uh, will have to go deeper. What we do already with our debit trainings, for example, and other formats, it's read, uh, reach out to the broader community to make sure that also the, the SMEs that are not very close to the international uh, buyers, but deeper in the supply chain, can build capacity and meet the needs of and the requirements of the, of the bigger companies. In G20, what is the recommendation that uh, Afin brings in this event? Um, we are a part of the B20 process. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a member of the task force of, uh, on integrity and compliance. And what we have been discussing during the whole year, the recommendation to be um, uh, handed over to the uh, uh, 
governments of the of the uh, yeah the G20 governments, and uh, that was a really interesting um, process. And we came up with uh, four main um, uh, recommendations. This is not the work of the Alliance for Integrity. It's a it's a work of very distinguished experts uh, from all over the world. And we just uh, we bring in the expert and the point of view of the SMEs mm -hmm. when it comes to um, um, yeah elaborate uh, recommendations for the governments. Um, for us, we always uh, try to make clear that governments should support collective action because collective action, in our view, is key to really prevent corruption. Mm -hmm. As I said before, one actor alone cannot do it. This is also embedded in the uh, stakeholder capitalism and the SDGs where we have a 17th uh, objective that relates to partnerships. So partnerships are so important and it's about B2B uh, collaboration, B2G, so business to government collaboration, also including civil society. Each actor has its role to play, his role or her role to play and only together we think we can really come up with sustainable solutions. So that is what we bring in on the one hand and the other is don't forget the SMEs, don't forget the specific uh, perspective of SMEs, uh, of SMEs and their specific needs and also the great um, uh, opportunities that they offer uh, to uh, make um, yeah, development more sustainable and bring a better life to, to, to the people. Okay. So yeah. that was the B20 com communique, right? The recommendations. Mm. So that was, um, right. yeah, that was discussed la yesterday or mm. just today? Exactly. Yesterday was uh, recommendations of the business sector regarding integrity and compliance were published. Mm -hmm. And you can find um, this document on the B20 website. Um, and this is the recommendation that ha are handed over to the governments. There is also an anti-corruption working group on the G20 level and there have been some sessions uh, during this year to make sure that the B20 and the G20 are aligned and that what uh, the business sector comes up with uh, with the recommendation is really helpful for the governments and a clear orientation to what is needed from the business side to promote integrity and compliance. And about the recommendation uh, uh, about the initi initiative and uh, collective action, how confident are you in its uh, sustainability? Yes, if I understand uh, what you mean I, I would say that collective action is, is at the heart of the solution or at least at the contribution to a fairer business and a world free of corruption. If we don't work together, and that is not only um, the case for uh, the fight against corruption, it is the case for whole sustainable development. If we don't work together and bring our resources together, our perspective and our knowledge, then we won't be able to have a more sustainable world. And we are in a very critical situation. Time is running out. So it's now or never to come together and really join efforts. So I think I don't have any more question like from my side. It's been so long since our last like face to face um, discussion, but very happy to finally catch up with you. Remember Vita? Yeah, uh, we usually have a quick, quick uh, question that you have to answer in a quick, uh, without uh, argumentation or explanation, just answer. Okay, are you ready with that? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> what Go the ahead. <laughs> first question. Uh, integrity by system or integrity by person? Uh, by person to change the system. Yoga or Zumba? <laughs> <laughs> Zumba, of course. <laughs> uh, alliances or individual? Individual. Uh, collective action. Do it together. It's the only way forward.
Thank you so much for having me. It was <laughs> nice to this. Do you have a, maybe a closing statement that uh, we have to hear about the message of Athens, maybe? Well, we are uh, in challenging times and corruption is a key obstacle to sustainable development. So we should never forget that we have to fight corruption, prevent corruption to really uh, contribute uh, to sustainable development. Thank you for having you. Chief yeah, Corner. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, thank you. you very it was much great to be here. Come. Yeah, it's very far away from Germany, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very but hard. it's great yeah. to be here in Bali. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mengadopsi budaya integritas, memperkuat garis pertahanan di saat krisis, dan akan membangun fondasi untuk kesejahteraan di masa depan dan demi dunia yang lebih baik. Salam, Salam integritas. integritas.